Well, shalom, y'all. I'm Pastor Bob, and I get to be, I get to be, I get to be one of the pastors here at Mount Tabor United Methodist Church. If you're watching on January 31st, it's my birthday, and you have granted me the grandest of birthday presents by allowing me to worship our Lord alongside you. That's a present I never want to stop unwrapping. This is a picture of Willie Williams, who was my counselor at Fellowship Hall in Greensboro. That's the treatment center I went to in 1997, trying to overcome my addiction to drugs and alcohol. Fellowship Hall is a wonderful place. I praise God for Fellowship Hall. I shudder to think where I would be without Fellowship Hall. I'm not sitting here if not for Fellowship Hall. But Fellowship Hall is pricey, almost 300 bucks a day when I was there. I like to think there's been a pretty positive return on the investment. But it was an investment, thank God for good insurance, that made vital health care affordable. We should do more of that, just saying. The hall is pricey, but it's got perks such as they are, considering you are, after all, in rehab. It's got a game room, it's got nice bedrooms, a beautiful walking trail, and a garden for meditation. The food's wonderful, though institutional. The hall's got bling. It also has a stellar workout room with machines and free weights and treadmills and ellipticals. It's not Planet Fitness, but it ain't bad. I really love the workout room and spent most of what free time I had during my time at the hall working out. After far too many years of lethargy and being slovenly in the midst of my using, I was ready to get swole. I was ready to get pumped. I was ready to get buff. I was ready to get yoked. Yo? Working out was going to be part of the plan for me. Don't get in the way of my plan. I admit that I'm still like that to an extent. Working out is very important to me. My, Beth, my friend Beth, the executive director of a wonderful initiative called my brother Legion aimed at advocating for the homeless community. She once told me that I had picked up a different leash. It's kind of harsh, but also quite honest. Working out is very important to me. Anyway, I really like the workout room at the hall. And if you didn't know where to find me at any particular time, it was a particularly good place to start. So I went, when I went there on a Tuesday morning in January of 1997 to see that it was closed for painting and would be off limits for the next three days, I didn't go ballistic, but I was pretty miffed. I voiced my concern to just about anyone unfortunate enough to be within earshot. Nurses, cooks, counselors, servers, custodians, the CEO. Didn't they know this was part of the plan to get swole and pumped and buff and yoked, yo? This was part of the plan. Don't mess with my plan. In the midst of my fussing, I got a message that Willie wanted to see me as soon as possible, so I made a beeline for his office, the better for me to tell him about how the workout room had been taken from me and my plan to get swole and pumped and buff and yoked was being violated. Someone was messing with my leash. I knocked on the door, Willie invited me in, and I stood before him boldly prepared with my manifesto of mistreatment. He heard me out for about 15 seconds and then gave me the look. Willie could kill you with that look. Willie could school you with that look. And it didn't matter how swole or pumped or buff or yoked or bold you were. Willie had the look. He asked me, no, he told me to sit down and then he laid it out for me. Look, he said. I wish I could hold a dollar for every time I've heard about you in the workout room in the last two days. I get that you like to work out. I get that it's part of getting better for you. I get all that. And then he proceeded to produce a picture of Herschel Walker, who played college football for the University of Georgia, winning the Heisman Trophy and then pro ball for the Cowboys and the Eagles and the Vikings and the Giants. Talk about swollen, pumped, and buff, and yoked. He's considered one of the great game's greatest players. Anyway, Willie showed me his picture and said, do you know what this guy does for workouts? I said, no, and Willie said, he does the two ups, sit-ups and push-ups. He doesn't lift weights. He doesn't need a weight room. He works with what God gave him. 
Do you want to argue with these results? Again, I said no, and then Willie said, you've lost your focus. You don't even know how close you are to disaster. You keep this up, and I give you two days before you walk out of here and get drunk again. You're making it all about you, and you've taken your eye off the prize. Now get out of here and go think about what I'm telling you. It was kind of harsh, but it was also quite honest. I went back to my room. I did a few push-ups and sit-ups and started to regain my sense of the importance of, as Jim Annis has often taught me, keeping the main thing the main thing. Jesus said that no one can serve two masters. For you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. James, the brother of Jesus, said that if you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Bob Dylan sang that it may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. Our human condition is usually one of friendship with the world, its stuff, its trappings, its entrapments. That can lead to warfare, both internal and external. What if we chose friendship with God instead, drawing near to him as he draws near to us, offering a kinship that is deeper, stronger, and more satisfying than anything else? It's the main thing. We're in week number four of our worship series based on the book of James. In week one, Pastor Mark spoke of endurance and patience as hallmarks of our faith. And in week three, he touched upon the differences between godly and worldly wisdom. In week two, I spoke of not just faith and works, but faith that works. This week, our topic for consideration is to whom we declare allegiance. Am I keeping the main thing the main thing, or am I at risk, ghastly and eternal risk, of losing my focus? Is it about the world, or is it about the word? The word that became human and made his home among us, full of unfailing love and faithfulness. Who's it going to be? you got to serve somebody. The scripture passage on which we are focusing comes from James' letter to the church. Verses 1 through 10 of the fourth chapter. Hear these words from the New Living Translation as my friend Chiquarda and some of her family read them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Just a few things about that passage before one more personal aside, if I may. In Romans 6, verses 12 and 13, Paul writes, Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. And in his letter to the church at Galatia, verses 17 through 21, the apostle pens, the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. This is really the disposition of sin, this estrangement from God, this notion that God is somehow not enough, which is what James is referring to when he writes of Scripture's meaning. That God is passionate about wanting to draw close to us, compelling us to draw close to him. There will be five steps to take in pursuit of this end of choosing friendship with God over friendship with the world. One, submit to him. I've said before, I can't. He can. I'm going to let him. Submit. Two, resist the devil. Jesus said that all the world's riches would never, ever mend a fractured soul. Swole and pumped and buff and yoked mean nothing if I'm drunk. Three, wash. That doesn't mean God's throne of grace is closed to me if I'm grimy. It means that God's asking me if I'm ready to do the hard but redemptive work of scrubbing. Four, repent and lament the lost time that could have been spent in the company of the one who created me. Lost to momentary and fleeting vanities. And finally, five, humble myself. And I mean humble, 
James says that God opposes the proud. But the original word used suggests that God is willing to go to war against the evils of pride. But humble myself, resting in the blessed assurance that my worth comes from God and not the matters of man. I could have disregarded Willie's call to focus. I'm sure glad I submitted instead. I could have resisted what I saw as a harsh assessment, but I'm glad I heard the divine spark of honesty instead. I could have pouted that the bling of the weight room had been taken from me, but I'm glad I went back to my room and started working with what God had given me instead. I could have contested what Willie was saying to me, but thankfully he inspired contrition instead. I could have held on to vanity, but I'm glad Willie taught me humility instead, and in doing so, paved the path to redemption when I was dangerously close to revisiting the road to ruin. Before I close, there's a reason why I asked Shaquarta and some of her family to read scripture for us this week. I first met her last October when she had left me a voicemail asking if the church could help her get some Christmas gifts for her family. Her husband, Patrick, children, Janija, Zavian, Kamari, and Lee. They'd lost everything in a Christmas Eve fire in 2018 and were finally beginning to rebound when the slings and arrows of COVID struck. She was just looking for a little help. The Koinonia Sunday School class stepped up and there was nothing little in the way they did so. They tended to the family's Christmas list and in doing so showed me what Christmas is supposed to be all about. I'm still in awe. Jaquarta came by the office and I was able to give her the gift that the class had given to me. We talked for a moment or two and then we both had to be on our way. I headed back to the office and turned to wave just as I got to the covered walkway. Chakorta was just sitting there, head firmly bowed and eyes firmly closed. It seemed best to leave her be. A few moments later, she sent me a text that read, please send my thanks. I'm so speechless right now. I could not just pull off. I had to have a moment of praise. I can't wait to see the faces of my babies. I'm just excited and blessed. I replied that a moment of praise was my new favorite line. There are two very cool realities that arise from this story. One, the Koinonia class would be just fine without you knowing what they did for a family in need this past Christmas. To a person, they told me the blessing of being able to bless was keeping the main thing the main thing. Two, Chakorta literally was not going to move one bit without stopping to give all glory to God from whom all blessings flow. Talk about keeping the main thing the main thing. I'm not stopping the presses by declaring the quarrels and fights among us. I'm not stopping the presses by declaring that too often I have made a friend of the world and an enemy of God, serving my will and not yielding in all humility to his. I think James is ultimately telling us that in God's economy, the way up is down, that the lowest get lifted up, that the humble are worthy of the most honor. To the world, it doesn't make any sense, but to the word that became human and made his home among us full of unfailing love and faithfulness, it makes more than sense. It's the main thing. We got to serve somebody. Who's it going to be? What are we going to do about it? Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the witness of your works and the witness of your words. Thank you, Father, that um, you show us the way. You show us the way and draw us close to you because you want to draw close to us. So keep us close, Father. May we declare our allegiance to you and not to the world. For we know that it is in you and from you all good and true blessings flow. We got to serve somebody. Show us the way to serve you. I pray all of this in your mighty name. Amen.